How's it, you guys? <clears throat> my name is Kale Furuya, and we are here with Chuck Furuya on court. Um, this is my dad, Chuck Furuya, and Ariana Suchia here, who is the Grom Sam. How's it? <laughs> we just want to thank Olukai for having us on Anywhere Aloha Fridays. Um, super excited to share with you folks what we do out here. So what do we do, guys? Yeah, so the intent was <clears throat> we have two younger generation, and I represent the old guard, the real old guard. <laughs> the OG. Uh, the old, real old guard, ancient guard. <laughs> so the whole point is that how can we, what can we do? What can we say? What can we you know, uh, uh, show you, their generation, to encourage more and more of their generation to enjoy wine? whether it's with dinner or by itself, that's the whole purpose of, of this podcast. Absolutely. I think a common misconception is that wine is intimidating and scary. And with Chuck Furia Uncorked, we hope to break that all down and actually have fun. Wine should be enjoyable. So I'm so excited today to actually do some food and wine pairings. Let's get to it. Yeah. So what are we doing? So the whole premise is, okay, you may not be familiar with the names of these wines or these wines, in fact, but we try to label it as country style, which means it's a style of wine that's served at cafe or bistro somewhere in the Mediterranean countryside and simply with food, farmhouse food, home cooked foods. And rather than swirling the wine and going, you eat the food and you gulp the wine. You wash the food down with the wine. That's our definition of a country wine. Delicious. And think about it. If we expect our foods to be delicious, shouldn't our wines be delicious as well? And today. Not 20, 30 uh, years from now. So these are ready to drink. Now. Yeah, and if we expect our foods to be lighter and fresher, shouldn't our wines be lighter and fresher, mm-hmm. right? And shouldn't it be delicious and food friendly, right? So that's the intent of these two wines. And we just did a little bit of salami and cheese with a little bit of crackers and breadsticks. And voila, we can have some fun. Absolutely. This is for anything you can do at home with a family barbecue or a friend's get together. You can just go by to your local store, buy a little bit of salumi, buy some cheese and some bread and have at it. Cool. Yeah. So what are the two wines that we're going to be doing? So the first wine is going to be, this is the Barrichino, Van Gris. So this is one of our posse wines for uh, April. And Van Gris means gray wine. So if you think about French, the French have noir, which means black. They have blanc, which means white. What's in between black and white? Gray. gray. Hence Van Gris. So you can see the color. It's orange. So it's made from red grapes. They squeeze the juice. They essentially throw away the skins. Perhaps a little bit of skin contact, but not much. Because with the skin contact comes bitterness. So these rosés, they're hard to find. We wanted one that's light and fresh. Salami has fat. Cheese has a lot of uh, cream. or mm-hmm. It's fat. fat. And so we want something to, so, so the best way to describe this rosé pairing here, it's like Thanksgiving feast. You have all this roast turkey, all this rich, savory food. Then you have the cranberry. So the cranberry freshens your palate between bites so you can go back to eating all the rich food. That's what these <coughs> rosés can do. Absolutely. I would also say that Birkino, coming out of Monterey, California, is a really fun, exciting winery. And they're trying to do things in the traditional old style way. So they have an old world approach, but it's a new world wine. So that's really exciting for us here on Encore. <clears throat> What's really cool too is that for April's wine posse bag, so we do a wine subscription every month. It's five Birakino wines. So it's very... Yeah, two, 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 two ex-hippies that just do things <laughs> like, uh, and totally out of the box, the wines are fabulous. And you know what the other thing that's really important? These wines are totally reasonable. I bought this bottle of wine at Our Field Kailua for like $18 a bottle. Uh-huh. I think that's a steal. Mm-hmm. You know, so we don't, we're not advocating to necessarily spend a lot of money with it. It's more about concentrating on how can we create a moment of enjoyment. So my role on the podcast is to kind of comment on, um, you know, things that are for, for layman's term, and they have great labels, so. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Birkino as well. Uh, well, the, the other thing that, the, the reason why this is important too, so regarding the ancient guard like me, so maybe I can clue them in on some of the thoughts about wine, but then these two then remind me or teach me what the new generations are looking for. And that's equally as important, at least, you know, because if we don't stay current on both ends, then it's, uh, you know, things just fall apart. So that's why this is a meeting of the generations so that we can encourage all of you, the viewers, to learn a thing about enjoying wine. So let's get started. Okay. So you go first. So why don't you grab some salami 
Okay. You could eat it and then try it with the rosé. Tell me what you think. For those Ari, of you, you at you home. You put some on the cracker, the cheese, and <laughs> okay. you tell me what you think. You tell me how, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you at home who are having the style of rosé, not all rosés are created equal, mm. so there's a lot of different styles out there. It's very purposeful that we picked this Birkina rosé, the Von Gris, because it is lighter and fresher, and it specifically works well with food, especially something like this that is a little bit, especially for me, a little bit richer. So not all rosés are going to have that cranberry to your... Nope, turkey. and if you look at it too, it's not heavy. It's effortlessly mm. light on the palate. It's not tannic, it's not bitter, it's not alcoholic. That's what makes this Birkina so special. So it's the quintessential country wine, because you can just and enjoy. Glug, glug, right? Yeah, glue, glue. They glug, call glug. one of their wines glue, glue. Glug, glug, yeah. So to me, it really is, that's what, what it's, what's going on with the salumi. Yeah. Is it's just to wash it down. Yeah, and also refreshing your palate between mm -hmm. bites. That's all it does. You know, so this would be a perfect wine to serve well chilled at, while you're barbecuing. Mm -hmm. You know, hot summer day at picnics and stuff. This is the perfect wine. At $18 a bottle. Wow. Absolutely. For those of you at home too, this is going to be really nice and bright. It's going to be nice and fresh, but don't expect a fruit bomb. Minerality is going to be driving the buzz here, not overly jammy, overly sweet fruits. Yeah. Very nice. What are you tasting with the cracker and the cheese? Like Chuck said, the richness of the cheese. This you is want a, to sorry, going this back is a goat's with, cheese, right? With herbs and stuff inside. It's goat and sheep and cow. I think so it's all So there's naturally a little bit of a tartness from the goat milk i would assume but it's still overly really rich and i want to keep going back to it because it's so good however like you said i just need to refresh my palate a little bit and that's where this wine comes into so play same effect just to wash it down mm -hmm. refreshing your palate from bite to bite. so mm -hmm. that's the cool thing is that when you go to the mediterranean basin especially during the summer months you go to cafe or bistros mm -hmm. you see crafts of pink wines on every single table mm -hmm. super well chilled chi uh sweating mm -hmm. because that's what they serve down there unlabeled just pouring your yep. eyes and it's just meant to smashed. be pure enjoyment from their friends or their neighbors that are growing grapes in the area it's a way of life there you know, they've been doing it for calories. generations yeah <laughs> well i would say for hawaii this is a way of life too we have hot summer days we have a little bit of humidity and heat we need something a little bit more on the refreshing side yep I agree. cheers Good. guys so wine number two after this yes so what's wine number two chuck so this is from uh this is Baltry and Nieri. And this, the grape variety is called Lambrusco. There's two different strains of Lambrusco mm. involved with this thing. So this is the kind of wine that you, that's being served in Emilia Romagna. And, uh, you know, it, it's more, it's fizzy. It's light colored, you know, and it's um, very in right now. Yeah, and very refreshing. This is the kind of wine when it's super hot or you just casual, you need, you need something thirst quenching and <clears throat> just uplifting and refreshing. Lambrusco. <clears throat> and I think we notice a little bit of bubbles there too, yeah, fizzy, right? Yeah, that's what I said, fizzy. Mm -hmm. And this wine is just delicious. It's like, it's just so light and just carefree. There's no, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to intellectualize anything. It's just refreshing. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk about that. This is so, this is what we try to do here at On Court, is we're trying to put everything that he has to offer, like all his knowledge and stuff. All those years. Yeah, on a platform <laughs> that we can all experience. We're, Ari and I are learning as we're going right here as well with you guys, you know. So that was kind of our intent out here. He, I mean, you want to talk about his credentials? Do you want to plug him? I mean, being one of the first few master sommeliers in North America, let alone being the first Asian American master sommelier, you know that we, he's, pardon? <laughs> and you know that he has had a lot of experience specifically building Hawaii's food and wine scene. So it's not just about wine. It's about how do we make this all-inclusive of food and the experience and hospitality. Being a sommelier, um, from what I've learned from Chuck, is not just about opening expensive bottles, but it's also about how you make people feel on the, when you're working the restaurant floor. It's about every day making people feel welcome, aloha. What we actually preach here at Uncorked is no wine shaming. So that's, yeah. I think, what Chuck really, to me, stands for. Like you said in the beginning, we're trying to make this not intimidating. You mm -hmm. know, we're trying to... No wine shaming. Yeah. That's, no, that's it in a nutshell, no wine shaming. And so, again, who would consider having a rosé with this? Who would consider having a rosé-colored fizzy wine? Mm -hmm. from an unknown, relatively unknown grape 
-hmm. You know, who would consider having a Beaujolais? Mm -hmm. Or things that, you know, what is a Beaujolais? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take wines from, in Emilia Romagna, everybody drinks Lambrusco. Mm -hmm. When you go to southern France in the Mediterranean ba or the Mediterranean Basin, everybody drinks Rosé. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when you go to Paris, everybody's drinking Beaujolais. Mm -hmm. You go to New York, everybody's drinking Beaujolais. So, yes, maybe it's a little foreign here in Hawaii, and especially for your generation, but worldwide, it's, it's, that's yeah, the way it goes, yeah. you know? That's just the way of life. I think when I'm working the floor as a psalm, I generally see people shy away from varietals or wine regions that they can't pronounce. And for me, I don't care how you pronounce it. I just care that you like and enjoy the wine. Yeah. So don't be scared of pronouncing Lambrusco correctly or not. You know, just give it a I mean, chance. I'm pretty sure Dad mumbled this wine <laughs> for his pronunciation to go. <laughs> so you try it with the salami, you, you, and then you try it with the salami. Okay. Piece of salami, so again, salami and salumis, uh, plural, mm. have a lot of fat. So you want something refreshing to it. Cut through the greasiness of the, of the salami. Mm. You know, it's just so refreshing, right? It's so tart. It has like a tart cherry that sings really really nicely like once again with the richness mm, of the to me this is more of a pairing too than the like you said the rosé was to wash it out yeah. refresh your palate this goes really well i think I that there's a little bit of almost like a peppery note mm -hmm. in the actual meat itself so having it with the savoriness of the lambrusco mm -hmm. is really really cool too yeah so would you have considered only because you tell me to. Yeah, exactly. So just to let you know, in the old days, back in the 70s, Lambrusco was very popular with, by, because of a brand of Rio Niti, but it was not very good. Mm. And then the other thing that we need to understand, Lambruscos can come from dry to super sweet. Mm -hmm. So you ha also have to know, calibrate your palate to what it is you're looking for, Lambrusco. Mm. The third thing is finding fresh Lambrusco. Because mm. Lambrusco, here in Hawaii, yeah, right? because it needs to be, f to, in order for it to be exuberant like this and, and, and lifting, uplifting, you have to ship it in temperature control. So mm. those are some of the quality mm. factors involved. And this is a small family owned producer. And you know, it's just something that we stumbled upon a few years back. And mm. I just think this wine is absolutely delicious. So. We just, I just bought this wine right before we started filming mm -hmm. at our field Kylo, not to promote a single store, mm -hmm. but it, you know, at the same time, if a store is going to go on a limb and carry something like this and the AC is always on, that's a good thing. I paid $15.25 for this bottle. Oh. $15.25. When you consider the cost of a bottle, a label, a cork, shipping it here, taxes, mm -hmm. everything, fifth, how much does that leave for the wine itself? Mm -hmm. So 15 something for this bottle of wine. And I think that's the wine was 18 something. Yes. I so think what we really wanted to do here today was make a little segment about how approachable wine and food can be and also how fun it is. You can literally just do this at home on a fun Friday mm -hmm. night with friends and also championing family owned producers. And that's really what Chuck Faria Uncorked is all about carrying on family legacies between father and son and also carrying on tradition within the vineyards themselves. Well, you know, again, on Saturday night, some friends came over. There was a total of uh, seven of us. One bottle goes this much. Mm -hmm. So during the course of the evening, you can have seven different wines with all the different courses without getting plastered. You know, and that's the fun thing. Or can, can, yeah. <laughs> so that's the point. I, I, you know, and so the whole thing is if everybody comes with a bottle that's interesting or they, something they've discovered or shared, it becomes a really fun experience. It doesn't have to be the focus of the get together. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's friendship and talking story, but you can have a lot of fun instead of just eating pipicala with whatever. Um, well, cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. <clears throat> and thank you to Olukai again for having us on Anywhere Aloha Fridays. Anywhere Aloha Fridays sounds like a great time for some wine. <laughs> cheers, Check us everyone. out on Chuck Faria Uncorked um, on Instagram to keep up with our newest episodes. If you guys want to keep learning about stuff like this, this is kind of what we're about, so. Absolutely, let's keep the party going. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, guys.